are about 2,000 varieties of cheese worldwide, and it can be made from the milk of a cow, sheep, goat, or buffalo. Uvica stuck to more generally available ingredients when she prepared this week's celebration of the big cheese. Grilled, melted or baked in pastas, pizzas and even in cakes, a generous sprinkling of cheese can turn an ordinary meal into soul food. I'm at my favourite supermarket searching for my star ingredients. I absolutely love cheese, even as a snack between meals. It really is delicious. I'm going to love preparing these dishes for you today. My kids haven't developed a taste for strong cheeses as yet, so I'm keeping it quite simple. Thanks. I've got my cheese for the savoury dish. I've got what I need. It's time to head back to the kitchen and after a quick freshen up, it's time to get cooking. I'm saying cheese with my biggest smile today and on my menu, savoury scones with smoked salmon for the main course, a mushroom macaroni and for dessert, a chocolate brownie slice with a chocolate cream cheese frosting. I've got a selection of cheese here. I've got cream cheese, mature cheddar, my favourite mascarpone and then grated gouda as well. Starting out with the scones now and for that, 280 grams of flour going into a mixing bowl. And to that, some sugar, some fine salt, and then three teaspoons of baking powder. I'm just going to use a teaspoon and work those ingredients together. Next, some black pepper. I love a rich buttery scone with a touch of zing in it, and black pepper adds it to the scone. The secret for making really good scones is to always make sure your liquid and your butter are cold. It's much like making pastry. Butter going in. And I'm just going to remove my ring before I work the butter into the flour. Make sure at this point that you don't overwork the dough. Next, I've got one beaten egg going into that. And then some fresh cream or buttermilk. Use your fingertips to work the liquid into the flour and work it as little as possible. If your dough is too soft, you can also refrigerate it for a while. The dough is now ready and use some flour on the work surface. Gently flatten out the dough. Now use a rolling pin and roll out that dough. I've got a scone cutter here. Just lightly dip it in flour and then just cut. That goes onto a grease baking tray. The great thing about scones is that they should be made with butter. And the aroma of these scones is absolutely amazing and it adds a delicious crispness to the pastry as well. I've got an egg here and I'm lightly beating it. Believe it or not, I'm using a brush to do this. And brush the top of the scones and make sure you don't let any of the egg drip down the sides because that makes the scones rise unevenly. So I'm popping these into the refrigerator for about 20 minutes. Macaroni and cheese reminds me of high school home economics in about standard six, when it was standard six and not great. I think I've just given away my age. I'm starting out with the cheese sauce first and for that some butter going into a hot pan. And once the butter melts, add some cake flour and a bay leaf. Bay leaf first, and then some cake flour. Mix the ingredients together and fry off the flour, or it will leave a very, very floury taste in the sauce. Now add some full cream milk, and I'm going to use a whisk. This looks like the perfect sauce, and to add a bit of richness, I've got two egg yolks here. Use a spoon and scoop some of that hot sauce into the egg yolk. This adds a richness to it. Again, use a fork and just work that together. Pour that back into the pot and whisk again lightly. Season with salt, then black pepper, and lastly, some grated cheese. Gently swirl the cheese into the sauce. 
And you can remove that from the heat. There's enough heat in that sauce to completely melt the cheese. The sauce is ready. Let's start with the mushrooms. And for that, I've already preheated a pan. And this is really important when sauteing mushrooms. Otherwise, they're going to hit the pan and stew. First ingredient, sunflower oil into the pan. And add some button mushrooms. And they start to brown almost immediately. And now fresh thyme going in. This is from my garden. Garlic going in. I've got crushed garlic here. Fresh is always the best. And I add the garlic after the mushrooms are browned so the garlic doesn't burn. Chili flakes, three teaspoons. Also, right at the end. Remove the mushrooms from the heat and leave that aside. Always season the mushrooms after they've been cooked. If you add the salt too early, you're going to have the mushrooms sweat in the pan and stew. A light sprinkling of salt. I've got a greased casserole dish to assemble the macaroni. Just grease this with butter. 350 grams of boiled macaroni here. Next layer, mushrooms. And when you're making this cheese sauce, you don't have to use the egg yolks. If you're a vegetarian, you can just leave them out. Pour that in. There's something really comforting about a macaroni and cheese. Smooth the sauce over. I'm topping this mushroom macaroni with a combination of mature cheddar and gouda. And then the gouda. My secret ingredient now going in, cream and cream adds a lovely richness, but it also prevents the macaroni from drying out. Lastly, garnish with some chili flakes. And bake this off in a preheated oven, 220 degrees Celsius for about 20 to 25 minutes. I normally bake it until the cheese is crisp and golden. Starting with the brownie cake. For the brownie, start out by melting some chocolate over a double boiler. Got some hot water here. A mixing bowl goes on top. And I'm using 60% dark chocolate. My kids don't like 70%, so I've gone down 10. To the chocolate, add butter. About 250 grams of butter. When it comes to chocolate, take your time. If the water's too hot in the pan, the chocolate's going to seize. The chocolate is silky smooth. Now you don't have to keep it on the heat until all the butter's melted because remember, there's enough heat in here to melt that butter. Leave that aside to cool. For the next step, four eggs go into a mixing bowl. Use a whisk attachment for the next step. And beat the eggs until they're light and fluffy. to add the sugar. Got 300 grams of light brown sugar here going in. On to the next step. Vanilla. And then the chocolate goes in. Use the spatula and gently fold in the chocolate. I use cake flour for this recipe. That goes in. To that, mixed nuts. I've got my favorite nuts here. I've got pistachios, flaked almonds, and pecan nuts. And I'm using salted pistachios for this. I love the way the salty flavor comes through with the chocolate. The nuts add a lovely texture to these brownies once it's baked. I've greased and lined a 10-inch loose bottom tin here. Scrape the batter into the prepared tin. Tap the tin down. Bake off the brownie cake in a preheated oven at 170 degrees Celsius for about 20 to 25 minutes. Now the cake should be squishy in the center and when a toothpick is inserted around the sides, it should come out clean. The scones have been resting, they're firmed up. These go into a preheated oven at 200 degrees Celsius for about 10 to 12 minutes. For the frosting, I've creamed some butter and icing sugar. Once it's light and fluffy, add a tub of cream cheese and just spread that over. That's as perfect as it gets. 
last touch going on, some pecan nuts. That's my frosted brownie cake, done. Say cheese. This is the kind of food that makes me smile. We've got peppery scones topped with mascarpone cheese and smoked salmon for the main course, a mushroom macaroni with a cheesy sauce, and for dessert, a chocolate brownie cake topped with chocolate cream cheese frosting. This is my version of comfort food. I hope you enjoy it.